DMEC versus enucleation is not often the choice that patients are facing. But recently we had a patient that we evaluated in clinic that had an unusual eye. Her history is that 15 years ago she was treated for a uveal melanoma with plaque radiotherapy that resulted in a bunch of problems. She developed a radiation-related cataract. She had radiation retinopathy. She had anterior segment changes resulting in cataract surgery and glaucoma tube shunt surgery. Um, after a while and everything had sort of settled down, the vision in the eye did not return, but gradually the eye became more uncomfortable. She developed corneal edema and band keratopathy and came to see us to do something about her cosmetically disfigured and painful eye. When we looked at her, we saw that she had an eye with very low visual potential and an opaque cornea with band keratopathy and corneal edema. And the question is, well, what to do? And in this situation, you know, when, when I have a patient with a corneal issue and low or no visual potential, one thing that I often will think about is something like a Gunderson flap. But in her case, she couldn't have this operation because she had no conjunctiva because of the prior radiation therapy and the tube shunt. So really what we're talking about here would be removing the eye versus some operation to try to rehabilitate the comfort and the appearance of the eye. And we thought the thing to try would be DMEC. So her surgery was just done in our office two weeks ago and this is that operation. We're starting with an EDTA chelation of the band keratopathy present in her cornea. The way that I like to do this now is with a K2 EDTA solution. It comes in the purple top tubes and you put that on top of a Wexel sponge and just sort of rub that into the anterior stroma after debriding the epithelium and then pick a bit at the residue remnants that remain in the anterior stroma with a took knife and then this diamond burr polisher. And then after some period of time, we gradually remove enough of the calcium deposits that we can get started with the case. You'll notice that the eye is pseudophagic and there's this whitish debris floating around in the anterior vitreous. The iris is fibrotic and the pupil is mid-dilated. I'm making my main wound with a three millimeter keratome kicked off to my right with my right hand. And I'm making it there because she has a tube shunt that needs to be trimmed. And the main wound needs to be positioned 90 degrees away from the tube so you can cut and grab the tube. And the way that I do that, it's the way I always do, is I reach directly across from the tube with some serrated coaxial forceps. I stretch the tube out and I cut it with coaxial scissors. And now here we are, we've done our decimetorexis, we've trimmed the tube and I've reformed the chamber and we're getting ready to proceed with the DMET graft unfolding. You'll notice a couple of things before we inject the graft. The first thing is I'm making a second main incision. This time over to my left with my left hand. And the reason for that is I'm principally, primarily a left-handed surgeon preferentially. And I think that this is going to be a difficult operation. So rather than trying to finagle these various unfolding techniques with my right hand through a main wound on my right, I would prefer to have access over by my dominant hand, which is my left. So contrary to what many people do, which is DMEC with trying to avoid using the main wound or suturing the main wound. I am such a fan of using the main wound. I'll make a second one over where I can use it with my dominant hand. So here we go. I'm making a new wound over there temporarily for my left hand. And now we're getting ready to inject the graft. Now the considerations for injecting this graft are You'll notice that this pupil is mid-dilated and the iris is sort of fibrotic and rigid. I don't think that this is a pupil that's going to be amenable to suturing. So rather than fiddling with it, I think it's better to proceed quickly and efficiently with the operation. We actually have a visiting observer with us right now, a brilliant cornea specialist from London, Dr. Hosny. It's something that he's really impressed upon me is that sometimes the best 
And the safest way to do the surgery is to do the surgery quickly. And so rather than mucking around in this eye for a long time, trying to sew up the iris and fiddle with this and that, I think that the best way to do this operation is to do it fast. So we'll inject the graft into the eye. I point the injector away from the pupil so I don't inject the graft behind the iris. And now here we have the graft is lying on top of the iris, and the configuration that the graft is assuming here is a non-pattern one, which is to say normally when you have a graft floating in the anterior chamber, the graft is curled into some recognizable configuration. It's a single roll or a double roll or a bouquet or the paper airplane or the jib. It's, it, there, there are various names for how the graft can sit inside of the eye. Here the graft is just sort of sitting there crumpled across the iris diaphragm in some non-pattern configuration and the chamber is shallow. So the first way to go about solving this issue is to deepen the chamber with a jet of fluid to get the graft to perk up and adopt one of more recognizable configuration and also give yourself room to unfold the graft. So that's the first step is to inject saline into the eye to get the graft to open up and move and look now the graft is in a bouquet configuration. We check the Motsuro sign it's positive. The graft is right side up so we help ourselves and push the graft over out into the angle. So here the graft is sort of loosely curled right side up in this bouquet configuration and we'll apply a few little Dirazomer taps to the surface of the cornea to get this little lingering edge to iron out. And now we have the graft totally unfolded. It's on top of the iris. In order to move the graft over, I'll deepen the chamber and that provides enough space for the graft to shift over nasally such that it's in the middle of the eye. And now I'll lift the graft up to the back surface of the cornea with an air bubble, again using the main wound, and then I pressurize the eye. So this is the end of the operation. And the patient was just operated on two weeks ago in our office. So it remains to be seen how the patient is going to be done, is, is, is going to do. This is just the early post-operative phase. But I thought this was a nice video to show because it shows that DMEC can be done even in these unusual, interesting, complicated eyes that have this weird provenance. And, you know, thinking about what could be done for this patient, how can you creatively help her without worsening her life? Yes, of course, you can take the eye out. But is there something shy of that that could be interesting and fun to do that would be less invasive for the patient and give her what she wants? A better looking eye with less discomfort owing to a rotten corneal surface. So we were really gratified to try this in our office, and I hope that this motivates you to try to do some of these more complicated cases yourself. And I think the takeaway points here, you know, there are lots of things we've talked about before. We've talked about where to make your main wound when doing a tube shunt revision. We've talked about the value of using the main wound. But I think also what may be sort of a nice little extra insight from these videos is when you're doing these cases, sometimes the best way to do them is to do them quickly and efficiently rather than slowly and painstakingly. I hope this helps.